Hello and welcome to Paxton Road TV. I am Sam Spurs for Life and this is Talking Points. Talking Points, our weekly show where we talk all things Tottenham. And as usual, Tottenham never fail us. They always have Talking Points. Um, tonight's Talking Points show is Nuno Espirito Santo. Is this Jose 2.0? And I'm joined in the house as per usual. By some super special guests. We have residents Mike Hosper Hustler, Sid Spurs, Mr. K, and welcoming from Let's Talk Tottenham, Chris. Gentlemen, how are we? That's how I'm going to start happy. the show. <laughs> <Christmas> <laughs> he looks really well happy. happy. He looks yeah, well happy, happy, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I mean. better than I was 48 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> ah, gentlemen, gentlemen. Um, what a weekend, eh? Uh, as I said, Friday evening, I was like, oh, God, this is great. The top of the league, all the rest of the stuff, as we do, we we, we probably go too far one way. And now, after a 3-0 defeat, after, as I said, it wasn't the... Oh, let's let's put it into real context. It wasn't a good performance at all. Um, didn't deserve anything from the game. But there's a lot of questions now being asked about Nuno, about the team, about transfers, etc., etc. Just after 48 hours, you know, Friday to Sunday, what a complete difference. So we're going to try and just have a, a little bit more of a, a sanity check, I guess. Let's ask a few questions. What What's actually happening? Was it extenuating circumstances? Um, so let's get into the show. Before I start, though, like, subscribe, share, comment. Welcome to Paxton Road TV. If you're first, if it's first time and you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Smash a like for us as well. And uh, yeah, help support us and help us grow. Continue to do that where you can, please. So, right. I'm going to start with the hustler. Start with the hustler. Nuno, is this a case of Jose 2.0 without the CV? What's your thoughts? Um, it's difficult to say. I mean, I'm going to say I'm going to put it out there. I, I don't think it is. I don't. I, although it is a little bit early to say how good he will be or um, whether he is uh, a, jo a Jose sort of point two um he's only been in the he's only been in the the hot seat for what a few months if that um and it's only his third or fourth um premier league game so i think i think it's a little bit hard to judgment around and i think the criticism yeah the the, the criticism in regards to his um the way he set us up the tactics um yeah they can be going brought into question and I think he does deserve some form of criticism um I mean I think uh was it Bob said it yesterday on Judge Jody's uh show really and truly Nuno only needed to make two changes from that from that side of the weekend instead he's made half a dozen um and I think he he has to take some responsibility for that and I, I and I like to think that I mean, he's he's still new to the job. We've got to cut him some slack. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be one that says, yeah, he's he's definitely a Jose Mark II. I, I don't I don't believe that myself. Um, I think we still got to give him give him time. He's still learning the player. He's still learning from the players, learning about who they are, their characters, what they can and can't do, etc. So it t these things take time, doesn't it? Rome wasn't built in a day. So I'm uh, yeah. I don't think he's a, a Jose Mark II. Okay, thank you for that. That's good, Mr. K. Uh, I saw your comment that you put in there. Very good, by the way. <laughs> I'll just go back to it because I like. I might even have to read this one out. This is good. Come on, you Spurs! It's time to sack Nuno. There will be some <coughs> that think it's time. They say I want to be proven wrong. That's having your cake and hoping to eat it too. Laugh out loud. Four games and sack the manager. Idiots. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That was one, no, no, no sitting on the fence there. No splinters there at all. Um, like I said, I think we, as a fan base, we, we go from one extreme to the other. We've got to be a little bit more balanced in, in, in what we're talking about. It's four games in. I have got I a couple of, um, I've got a couple of stats here, but I'm going to let you say what, what, what's your thoughts um, about the comparisons to, to Nuno being a, a Jose 2.0 of a lesser version, shall we say? I think it's just trauma from last year. I think it's trauma from last year where we had some incredibly highs. We had all these players coming in in the September, August window, transfer window. So we thought, yeah, man, we're really going to be going for it. Come towards the end of November, we're at the top of the table. 
And then all of a sudden, we started crashing down after a, after a, a terrible run against West Ham. And all of this sounds a little bit familiar, except we've done it in four games. And I think to a certain degree, some of the fan base is going to turn around and think, oh, no, not again. Because when you actually look at the actual pitch and look at the actual game, you can't tell the difference between that team playing and, say, for example, one of Jose's you know, mm -hmm. matches last season. It looked almost exactly the same. It looked for no creativity in the middle, a void being there, um, people that are having to play out of position because there's a void in the midfield, you know, hint, hint, winks. Um, and then you bring on... And then whatever bad luck can possibly go on to Spurs, because let's face it, bad luck is just waiting to rub itself against Spurs. When it does happen, we then tend to like resort to players like, for example, Davis, who then come in and leak in two goals. So from bad, it got to worse. And I think to a certain degree, that's what we saw under Jose, where I think to a certain degree in the second half, there must have been at least 90% of the fan base that's turning around and screaming and saying, put on Hill, put on Dombele, put something creative on. We're a goal behind. We have to chase the match. Mm. And that never happened. And we this think to ourselves, okay. I'm just going to stop did... you because Go I've got a special guest here. He looks like a very special guest because I've not seen this guest before. Come Bloody on. hell. What <laughs> has he done? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What are we? The bearded one beer. has gone from the bearded beer one. Well. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> from you know, like the policeman from now. <laughs> from I like from that. Selic. I like Tom that. Selleck's here. Magnum. Tom Selleck has arrived. Magnum PR is in the house. <laughs> Knight Rider. Well done, well done. <laughs> Let's welcome Marco. Magnum PI in the house. Tommy talks ball. Welcome. <laughs> That's put me off. That's what I saw you in the bottom hole. I was thinking, put me off. The reaction put me off. That's what I spilled. It's my Mario. <laughs> it's Luigi. <laughs> okay, okay. Before we before this before this show descends into a complete farce, let us just get back on it. We can deal with Tommy <laughs> later. But welcome, Tommy. By the way. You shouldn't do that, though. You can't shave your beard off just before you come on our stream. Wow, that's uh, I did that's it, really good. I studied it last night. I got all this sleep last night. I got the Mario. I got the Freddie Mercury. I got all this last night. <laughs> 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 Look, I, th I think yeah. certainly, if I finish let, off let my me, point right, let, yeah. Let Mr. K continue. Sorry about that, Mr. Yeah. K. But I no, no, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm actually surprised by Luigi Pop making an appearance. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you never know. You never know. He might be able to hit some points for us. Um, but generally speaking, because of this type of play that we saw, and because in our own intelligence we think to ourselves, the the game is screaming out for some creativity, we become frustrated when we don't see the manager right. Yes, subbing on, like he's still got one sub in hand. Why not mm. use it? You know, bring on one. You know, bring on a creative player. Um, now, Nuno's going to have his own reasons as to why he did what he did. The only problem as player, as fans, is that that explanation is not given to us. We get told uh, that we had control, and we're thinking, well, we're not in this game for control. We don't give a bugger about control. What we care about is whether winning, putting the ball in the back of the net or not. That's all we care about, and because that's how you win games in the Premier League. You know, we're not Real Madrid or Barcelona where we're going to play some fancy-wancy football. We need to win. And, you know, points make prizes. That's all we need to do. The Premier League is like that. Week in, week out. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get the ball in the back of the net. 90% of the fan base will be, will be with you if you score a goal and win. We won't turn around and say, oh, well, that was really boring football. We don't care as long as we're winning. Ah, so I, I would disagree degree, with that to some point because I, okay, I bet there no, is a number to a of certain people... degree. No, to a certain yeah. degree, you will start to disagree with it. But the problem is, the vast majority of the fans just don't want to keep seeing us capitulate, you know, capitulate game after game. And the problem is, once the players get a taste for it, we fear that this is going to happen again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Then we look at back at the transfer window and we think, oh no, did we not strengthen our team properly? Is that the reason why Nuno's putting in so many youth players into the Conference League? You know, are we having to rely upon 18-year-olds to come and save I, us. I would, say that's, I would say with the, the UECL, and I want to come to, to, I know that Chris has got to go soon, but I would say with the UECL, that's a perfect opportunity to play youngsters. If they're not ready, you, you never find out if they're ready if you don't play them in that sort of competition because it's not top tier. It's not like it's, you know, even Europa League level. It is UECL. Now, I know there's some tough teams in it, 
and they have to be proven. But when are you going to find out whether this youngster is good enough? You can't mm. find out from friendlies. You have to play them in competitive games. So there's an opportunity. So I will come back because we have some other points we're going to come back to on, on, on some of those things. Ava. But Chris, I, I know you, you've got limited time, so I want to come to you. Um, what's your thoughts on this being a, a, a Jose Mark II? I agree with Mike. It's not that at all. He's only been in four games. But uh, it, it, I agree with Mr. K as well. That game against Palace was very uh, Jose, wasn't it? Um, but I, I'm putting it down as just a one-off and just a bit of a bad day. But uh, he, he obviously picked the wrong team and a defensive team, which then gives Palace the uh, impetus to go, well, we can attack these because they're playing defensive. But I, I haven't really got a problem with the team that was put out. I, I'm not by any means saying it's the right team to put out, but... There's been hundreds of managers before, 100 managers since will put out the wrong team. It's the fact he didn't change it when it clearly wasn't going right. That's how a manager earns his crust. Like, oh, I don't understand. And then he comes out on match of the day two or, or whatever it was, match of the day, and says that we lacked creativity. And he's got two of them on the bench. He made two subs in the whole game out of three, and they were all forced upon him, a red card and, a, and an injury. Um so I just don't understand that, but I'll put it as a bad day. But yeah, I mean, if, if it carries on, then you the comparisons with Jose are just going to continue and continue and get stronger and stronger. And then <laughs> people after four games saying he should be fired. I mean, there was someone on the, the chat saying, get a grip, I agree with that. But <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, I, I, I was absolutely furious on Sunday after I watched Match of the Day and saw him say creativity. I'd calm myself down, watch that, and then I got even more annoyed. But because of the whole... We had control in the first half, he said, which I'm not sure what he was watching. Uh, and then a lack of creativity when he had two of them on the bench. And if he doesn't trust those, then I don't know why he's putting them on the bench. But yeah, I'll put, I'll put it as a one-off and then hopefully Chelsea we can bounce back and get a bit more of a tacking sense. Okay. <laughs> I can't help laughing. Before I come to a Mario, I'm going to go to Sid first. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have done... How can you do this to me? This is not fair. It's really not fair. Um, <laughs> Sid, uh, talk to me. Tell me about what your thoughts are on, on on Nuno so far in the comparison to Jose. I agree with Mike and uh, Chris and Mr K as well. I think with three games into the season, um, if Palace game hadn't happened the way it happened, would we, would we be having this conversation? I probably don't think we would have done. Um, but I think it's just in the manner how we got beat. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of things before the game, in the game, that were out of his control. The red card, dire injury. Um, but what I do believe, which is a bit Jose type, is his substitutions. I think all three games so far, the, the need for substitutions, it's like non-existent. He doesn't react. Um, even if we're not playing well, he doesn't realise that, you know what, I need to change or put some new phrases on, freshen it up a little bit. He did it. On Sunday, Like we were all crying out for the two creative midfielders. Everyone knew that. Um, I don't know if Ali, Ali Gold was saying that he Hill was ready twice to come on, but when, we don't know. But obviously, circumstances must have got him ready and then circumstances changed. But going back to the original question, it's too early. In, it's too early doors, mate. You can't, you can't say you know out now because first three games, we won them. Everybody was like, yes, really good, really good. And we've had one bad game. And I mean, when I mean bad game, it was an absolute... If it, anything could go wrong, everything went wrong in all directions, yeah? And uh, I think... See, I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to apologise to viewers here. I, 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 I sincerely apologise on behalf of all the Paxton Row TV here. But the, it's, the, it's the comments that I, I can't deal with the comments. Please, can you stop that? Can, you now can stop? I just say... Can I just say... <laughs> Can I just say, can I just say, 90% of these people, 90% of these people were on my screen last night. 90% of these people were on my screen last night. So they knew the crap. They knew the crap. It's you guys laughing that's making it worse, I'm telling you. <laughs> Tommy, okay. legend. You okay. are a legend, Tommy. I don't yeah, care. You legend, are definitely, legend. Tommy. You are a legend. I have no. Mate, it's staying. Nothing. Mate, it, I'm a trendsetter. It's staying. One hundred percent. Sorry, Sid. I apologise for that. Uh, had, had you finished your point, Mike? I'm you need to turn your mic off if you're going to laugh in the background. As well as your, as well as your camera. Still hear you, Mike. I was just going to finish off by saying uh, they all made mistakes, and I think 
Hugo Lloris on Sunday must have slipped a banana on in, into the penalty <laughs> box for Eric Dyer to slip. So I'll end on that one. <laughs> right. I'm going to just bring up, um, this is what I've wanted to share, getting back to a little bit more professionalism in the show because, yeah, we can we can laugh at it. But we have got a serious topic to try and, and discuss. Anyway, right. So this was, uh, or this is, should I say, um, let me just get it up onto the screen. Jose's and... Nuno's first four fixtures uh, in charge. Um, so I just tried to do a bit of a comparison. So but again, you've got to put things into context. You know, we don't know the starting 11s. I haven't put all that details up. Uh, there's a little bit of an asterisk by the Crystal Palace one, obviously, player sent off, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's interesting to see that the first four games of Jose, West Ham, 2-3, Spurs, 3-2 against Bournemouth. Uh, we lost 2-1 against uh, Man United, 5 0 against Burnley. But very much pretty much an attacking team you can see by the total number of shots the shots on target do you know the the touches passes were all pretty high yeah. um the reading below obviously i don't expect us to have a lot of possession against manchester city um so you are going to expect them touches and passes to be low but the wolves game which we did win one nil the watford game being a bit of an outlier there you know 58 percent. we did we did attack well but you can see that there's, there is a slight a slight trend there under 500 in terms of touches against man city and against crystal palace and the passes again nothing above well only one above 500. um mr k does that point to any sort of trend because obviously jose started off very attacking but then something changed there was a sea change was it kind of too many goals going against for jose's liking does i think that... basically i think at the beginning of last season we had kane and sonny acting together and being an absolute fire okay and this season that doesn't exist that combination doesn't exist so we've got a lack of confidence in in the overall team in terms of our attacking intent plus we always had bail on the on, on on the bench or something like that we had some sort of secondary threat that the opposition had to worry about now we don't have a secondary threat on the bench uh, the passes you can see straight away that we're not passing the ball anywhere close to what we used to do under under Jose. Um, so I think this is worrying to a certain degree, but at the same time, maybe this is just a pattern of things to come from Nuno's style of play, where he's looking for a more effective way of uh, scoring goals. But um, you know, I think I think as someone once said in the stream, I think maybe Bob Spur once said that it's going to take a few games for us to start recognizing what type of pattern or play that Nuno is trying to instill into our team. Don't forget, it's a two-way process. He wants to do something. The players have to meet that. And mm -hmm. if the players cannot meet it, then he has to do something drastic. And I think, to a certain degree, maybe that's what happened in the last game. He didn't know what to change. He didn't have the trust and the belief in the players that he could bring from the bench onto the pitch, whether they could continue or whether they would go higher. And he said it before, throughout the summer, saying that it's very difficult to bring players in they either have to match the quality, if not be better than what we have. They have to bring us something new. And maybe Gil is too inexperienced. Maybe Dombele it hasn't got the energy or, mm -hmm. or the mixture to go into that team. But this is very, very worrying. Look at those touches, man. They're like, on average, they're nowhere yeah. near as close. There, the shots a, are... I mean, two shots in Crystal Palace. It's not like we were playing against like Barcelona or something. I, I, I guess what I would... Ball. What I would compare this to is obviously these were the first five games of Jose when he was, you know, trying to pander up to the crowd, you know, going along the, the ways of like very attacking. That did change. There was a sea change. And we know if I was probably going to compare the last four games of Jose to these first four games of Nuno, they'd probably be a bit more comparable. I think they'd be um, the same. Do you think in terms of what the attacking stats? I think, I think in we... terms of I think in terms of the number of passes that we had and also a number of shots that we took on, it seems to me that towards the end of Jose's tenure, we weren't getting anything. Yeah, and that true. was one of the reasons why he was getting sacked because the games were absolutely awful. They were they were terrible. Um, I know that Tommy. I'm going to come to you. Do you, can you read anything into these stats? The stats are going to you have to put into context. But is there anything? I know you've you've got a couple of uh, Wolves uh, friends that you know. That have given you some information about how Nuno was as a manager. Can we read anything into these first four games to kind of point to a, a trend? I think um, I think the talk the talk of Nuno, uh, you know, wanting Nuno sacked or any anything like that is is, is absolutely crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. Agreed. But it's not just the Palace game. It's not just the Palace game. 
if you look at the other three fixtures, if you look at the other three fixtures, the performances were not there. Uh, Wolves, we were completely, his old club, we were completely dominated against. We were completely overwhelmed. We got out of that with a victory. I think um, I think Wolves struggled in the first three games. To be They lost 1-0 in all their three games. Obviously, Raul Jimenez coming back from a fractured skull after a year. They don't really have that main striker. And, uh, you know, Adama Traore is Adama Traore. So, um, I don't think we played great in any of the games, to be perfectly honest. And, and it's going to be negative, unfortunately. You know, I've said it a few times, strap yourself in, because it's going to be negative. That's the way it's going to be. That's the way he operates. That's the way he operates. Wolves fans, and, you know, if you've got eyes, if you've got eyes and you watched him play last season, and the seasons before it's a, it's a negative counter-attacking system uh, and the biggest issue the biggest issue is the um the, the overall the overriding question for the stream is um is is um is nuno jose version two and, and he is in every way i hate comparing people i hate comparing footballers i hate comparing anyone to anyone but he just is in in every way in, in every way shape or form and um okay. and, the, and the fact one more thing i just want to mention that um uh, Nuno was uh, Jose Mourinho's keeper back in the day at Porto. He said that's why he idolised him. He, he he took some of his football on board and he said, "This is how I'm going to manage. This is how I'm going to manage." So he's he's, ver he's version two. He's basically his apprentice, man. He's basically his apprentice for me. Chris, it's only Chris, four games, but I, I want to get some thoughts from Chris because I know he's got to go soon. Uh, Chris, what would you respond to that? How would you respond to that? Uh, well, I think those first four games under Jose, like you said, he was pounding up to the crowd. Everyone. There were a lot of people who didn't want him because of his negative play. So let's play a bit of attacking football. Uh, and then he saw that the <laughs> playing attacking football on the wasn't good enough. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then he had to kind of shift into really. Um... <laughs> <coughs> and then he had to shift into real negative mode. Uh, and I think Nuno this season has had to play a bit negatively because the defence was so awful. So if, if he started going out uh, attacking, I think we'd have been picked, certainly against City, would have been picked off. So I think he's had to play negatively in that respect to get the defence sorted out. And then I'm hoping the defence gets sorted out and then he can work on um, the attack. But, I mean... Would you not yeah. say we're better defensively, though? Well, you have to say we are. Really, we only conceded in one game, I'd say. Uh, Palace game aside, but... Um, so yeah, I mean, some, so he's done some positives so far, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. And, and, and Pochettino in his first year, we were brilliant some games, absolutely dreadful other games. So it takes a little time to get your your style. Well, Klopp as well at Liverpool were. I, I saw him in his first game. That was the first time I had a season ticket, and they were absolutely dreadful. And now, now look at them. It takes time for them. Um, different philosophies and different players. Well, Klopp, but the through. thing is, Klopp, Klopp played expansive football at Dortmund. He played expansive yeah. football in his, on his, uh, oh, his, yeah. his management my, job. My, my point being, it just takes a little time but for a new club for that that thing to come through and be consistent. So I think there's been elements that are good with Nuno in terms of the defensiveness and, and how solid uh, two defenders who were awful last year looked. Uh, but obviously, if, if we're playing like this every game that's not gonna wash is it with Spurs fans but like Mr K said if you're winning you can handle one nil wins with one shot on goal all game it's exactly like like Jose and but the set you saw it with Jose last year when we were top of the league no one really minded because we were winning as soon as you start losing it's it's not good so, so I, I, I'm hoping it's a one-off and just so a real bad day at the office and then Chelsea will be a so I'll put this out there then um based on what Zyron the test is saying here. Uh, welcome, Zyron. Wolves have dominated every team they've played this season. So if you put that into the games that we played, Manchester City, we won the game, but you wouldn't expect to dominate that game. Wolves why wouldn't have... you? Sorry, say that again. Why wouldn't you why wouldn't you expect to dominate? If you think you're good enough and you've got the place to do it, because, doesn't matter if it's Man City. Because, because usually Man City are always a team that has possession. I mean, in terms of domination, I, I mean more. Possession-based domination. Possession. You can have more shots than City, but ball-wise, I don't think yeah. they've ever... There's not many games I've seen where City have less possession than the opposition. So I would expect them to have more of the ball. Going back that to wasn't the a bad performance either, was it? No, no, that was a good performance. A... I, because I would, I would want us to perform like that against City and win that way because that's the way you've got to... You know, If you yeah. go out and go gung-ho against City, there's, there's two things that can happen. You could either blitz them or you can yeah. lose quite heavily. The way Guys, you've got you to do is... Compare... You, no, no. I, I, what I'm, I'm just going to go back to the point on that. So what Zyron's is making. Wolves have dominated quite a number of teams this season. 
Watford, very good team as well. Uh, Palace, there was extenuating circumstances. With, so are, are, are we as a fans, not, not saying you guys as a panel here, but are we as fans looking a little bit too deeply into the fact that, you know, four games in, there have been some difficult, you know, we've, we've won the first three. <laughs> Let's not get that twisted. We won the first three. And we haven't three. conceded a goal. <laughs> and then to the point we had a little bit of the wheels falling off, but there were circumstances which caused that. When you lose, you know, three players for the fact they're going off on international duty and can't come back into the country, you lose your, uh, you're probably one of your better defenders, even though last season he probably wasn't. But certainly this season, Dyer was playing very well, comes off after X amount of minutes, not really helped out by the pass that Lloris has given him. Then you go into the, the rest of that, you know, the midfield selection, there was no creativity in there. And then we all know the Tanganga situation. We did hold out until 76 minutes. Davis then does a handball and then it capitulates. So my point is, are we looking a bit too much into the fact that four games in, a lot of people are saying the wheels are falling off already. I'm going to come to you, Mike, on that. What's your thoughts? I, I just don't see how after four games in, anyone can say the wheels are falling off. I just don't, I just does not, I just can't comprehend that, that thought process. Um, the fact that we've, sort of entered the season with a new manager we had the first three games we haven't even conceded a goal so how can we all as a fan base be be sort of in in new like against nuno or criticizing him I, I get the i get the palace game you take the palace game out of the equation surely at the first three games anyone with a new manager would be like first three games i'll take a one nil win in every single game a win's a win, isn't it? Regardless, in the Premier League, everyone will take a win, especially with a new manager. First three games kind of takes the pressure off him. I mean, we all thought that Nuno wasn't going to, or oh, Spurs weren't going to do much in the first season, uh, first game of the season. We were all a bit like, yeah, that's a free hit for Nuno. But we played, I thought we played very well, kept a clean sheet, which is not many teams in the Premier League going to keep a clean sheet against Man City. Um, and and the lads put in a, in a put in a good performance. Against Wolves, yeah, we got dominated. But Wolves is, I mean, how many teams last season were under Nuno? How many teams went to, to Wolves and found it difficult to get three points? Not many, because he got sacked. Well, <laughs> we've got to understand there's a different team as well. Different set of players, <laughs> yeah, a different think, crowd and different expectation. I think Nuno, last season, well, certainly last season with, with Wolves, Nuno had a lot of injuries, didn't he? But previous... If you go under Nuno's tenure as a whole, going to Wolves generally was a difficult place under Nuno to go and get to go and get any points. In, in my opinion, and against Watford, I mean, Watford predominantly just sat there on the 18-yard box and defended. I mean, they, a lot of teams. I know we. You can argue the creativity there isn't at Spurs, but I think a lot of teams. If you've got a, a decent organised outfit like Watford, who they were very well organised defensively. However, we want to say that oh, we didn't have enough creative creative players. Well, what, uh, Watford, you can't take it away from them. They were set up and they were organised and they were there to, to try and frustrate us. And, and I think they were there just to set up for a draw. But we got the win. I know it was fortunate from Sonny, from Sonny's goal. But, I mean... We did had we did have chances, so yeah. I, for me, listen, I, I find it difficult to. I just find it difficult to say uh, to think that Nuno. I don't know. There, there, there's cracks in that started to show with Nuno, etc. I think you've got to give anyone, any manager, give him at least ten games, and then of course, of course, like, of course. I, and, I, and that's the and that's the fact. For me, I think he has to take responsibility for the team he picked on. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's where it went wrong for me. You know, the midfield, there was no creativity. We could all see that. And I think, as Chris mentioned, and Sid maybe mentioned, there was no changes. You know, there wasn't, you know, I know he was going to bring Hill yeah. on and know that it was like the Tanganga sending off. But even so, you, you still, when you go 2 0 down, you may as well go for it. You know, it didn't yeah. seem like he was going for it at any point. It was almost like resigned to the fact, okay, is it damage limitation? I didn't like that. You know, if you're 1 0 down, player sent off, you can still, as Chelsea have proved, you can still play well. You can still have, you know, an organised setup, and you can still counter attack. We didn't even have any of that by not having those players on the pitch to be able to. Maybe do that. Nuno so... forgot which team he was like looking after. <laughs> <laughs> it is difficult though when you're in a London derby. If, you, if you've gone down, if you've gone behind, and you're, you're a player down, you've you've taken an injury to uh, to one of your main centre backs at that precise moment in time. 
Sometimes you come... might it might be a case of damage limitation if you're two 0 down. I mean, you could put on creative players and go for it when it's the 18th minute. Damage limitation against Crystal Palace. Damage <laughs> limitation against Crystal Palace. But you're two 0 If you're two 0 but Tommy, if you're two 0 down, Legendary Riero's playing. If you're and Connor, down, he could just run past all our team anyway. We're in the Champions player. League final two years ago. We're in the Champions League. Yeah, but if you're two 0 down, ago. if you're two 0 down away from home and you're and you've got ten men. If you go and try and take it to them, you could get pounced 5 0, 6 0. Then, then what? You could have just turned around and said, Well, then what? Then what? You still got zero points, and you still got zero points. Yeah, but you save, you're saving face, aren't you, by not getting absolutely smashed in the London derby? I think, you know what? I give, I give Nuno some leeway in the fact that, you know, we can, we can have a go at his starting lineup, and it wasn't yeah, starting definitely lineup, have a go at his starting He didn't have many lineup. options. He didn't have many options, did he? Other than Hill, he didn't have many options. And, I think it's un uh, uh, unforgivable, to be perfectly honest. Hmm. Unless the way the way I can forgive this is if Gill turns out to be a flop at the end of the season. Maybe he has no trust in Gill whatsoever. He just got uh, given an under twenty ones captain armband. Yeah. I think you're more trust in Winks, though. You're you know getting what more trust in Winks. And the thing yeah, is, exactly. you, does, you could you could take any. I don't understand this right. Yeah, what, maybe something else happens behind the scenes that we're just not aware of, which could because, be the case. Uh, you know, and, and I think maybe there's an element to Wink's play that we're not aware that he has he has access to a certain tap and ability but Mr. that K, we can't our see. Eyes, our eyes do not lie. You can see fully <laughs> in a game like Crystal Palace to have yeah. someone like Tangai and Dombele as yeah. opposed to Wink's when you've already got Hoybier and Skipping. You cannot tell me we would not look more attacking. There's no way. Okay. I don't care what he sees in training, unless Tango said to him, "I'm just smoking a cigarette here. I don't. I'm not doing nothing." <laughs> that guy is more talent in his left boot than Winks has got, and that's me being that's, real. That's the question. You know isn't it? Why is there, that's, there's, there's, those are the questions I want to ask? If I was going to, that's the him. thing. Like, if you've got Tango on the bench, why are you not? Why are you playing Winks over him? I mean, that's the, uh, like Tommy just said. You can we can criticize. Uh, Nuno for the lineup because realistically, and I, and I go back to this point, he could have made two changes which wouldn't have had much sort of effect on the team or detrimental effect on the team. I.e., he should have played Rodon instead of Tanganga at centre back, pushed Tanganga back out at right back. Then that back four hasn't really changed other than Rodon going in. Sun's injured, put it put Hill out on the left like um, like that, which is his normal sort of position. Ali could have then dropped back into that number 10 and then your, mid, your team hasn't changed that much. <laughs> yeah, got for, 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 you three, four, three, three again. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, look, 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 Tommy turned around and said, right, yeah, that, that, that he had this sort of creativity on the bench. The problem that us fans had was that he didn't bring that creativity yeah. onto the pitch. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. I t what yeah, was yeah, the point? Yeah. What's the point of having people on your bench if you're never going to use them when you absolutely desperately need to use them. And towards the last 20 minutes of the game, right, yeah, we absolutely desperately needed to use that someone that could open the game up for us, and he didn't do so. So as much as some people want to turn around and give him a pass and say, listen, it's only been about three, four games, we're just getting kicked off, what the worrying thing here is that it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that's what you need to do. So if they're, okay, say, say for example, we trust Nuno, right? then there's something about those players that he knows that we don't know. And the but problem as is, fans, we, as don't, I, I, we can't I, I, see that, though. I can, the I problem can, is, I can... he set us up for a draw, didn't he? I mean, you look at that team, yeah. it's just set up for a draw. Going back to your hey. point, Mr. Kado, I, I, I will say that you do, as a manager, as a coach, you will see things that you will not want to other players. So, obviously, in training, you know, Tango must be doing something that doesn't suit because there's been Jose Mourinho... Uh, actually, going back to Potts, you can say Potts, you can say Mourinho, you can say even uh, Ryan Mason, to a degree, have seen something. But we can all see when the guy's on the pitch what he does. Now, you have to, sometimes, I think you have to almost try and create something around a player you know who's got those deficiencies, but has got so many more other positives. You try and do something around that. If Tangai's not got the most energy to be tracking back, don't play him as a holding midfielder or don't play him as a box-to-box. -box. Play him in a system which you're going to get the best from him at what he's best at, which is attacking and going through players and threading balls through. That's what he does best. We've Breaking all seen the lines. it. Breaking yeah. lines. And we had nothing 
on I Saturday. Do you know, I did not this think is... I'd be coming on this stream defending Nuno. I did not <laughs> think I'd be coming on this stream defending Nuno. But how can you play in Dombele? I don't know. He didn't play any of the preseason games. How can you play Wings? There is, there is how that, can you play Wings? Wings? Wings played in preseason. Wings well, played did in he play well? You think he played but well in preseason? It doesn't matter. It's, it's principle. Wait, that's, not, and that's the point. If he didn't play well, why are you still playing? You have not given this other guy a chance. Look, guys, it doesn't wait. matter if Nuno is at the helm. Nuno has principles That's and morals. If you're not playing minutes, if you're not if, if you're not um, playing minutes, then you're not getting on the team. I think that. I think, I think, that think shows most managers lack of respect. Yeah, I think, that I think most managers. Okay, so that goes. So that goes. Then, so you, as soon as Raw comes, in, I agree you, with that. You, you I throw him in. That. Do you know what I'm saying? You could have played yeah. Roden at centre back, and you could have played T Tanganga still at right back, but he didn't. He played a player that has just literally turned up and threw him in. So I can't accept the fact that because a player might not have played minutes, he can't play. That's. In my opinion, Again, you could say that. And Dombele's been there for three months. And Dombele's been there That's for the three point. months. He hasn't been injured. He hasn't been injured. He didn't go to Euros. He still hasn't played a minute. He still hasn't played preseason or league games. So obviously, Nuno doesn't like him. So for me, the only option going into Saturday was Gil. And that's why I give him leeway. And if he hasn't got faith in Gil, I don't know why. Because effectively, he cost us £35 million. Pounds. £23 million pounds plus Lamelo. We could have got £10 million pounds for Lamelo. He's 29 years old. There's a big market for him. Gil effectively costs thirty-five million pounds. I don't care if he's twenty years old. Wingers eighteen, nineteen, twenty—they—they—they they, they get onto the big time at that age. It's different for a centre back or keeper. So I'm like, Gil was the only option. If you don't have—if you don't have faith in him when Son and Bergwijn's injured to play Gil, what? When will you have faith in him? When will you have mm. faith in him? I think the, the rest of the, the rest of the season, Bergwijn or Son will be fit. So what, what are we going to do with Gil? I don't understand. I, 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 that's what I couldn't understand. You have to play Ali and you have to play Gil. As Mr. K says, it wasn't rocket science. You put Ali back in the centre, like he's played for the first three games. You take Winks out, you put you on the left. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not I, rocket I, science. I, yeah, I think, yeah, I I think with the Undon Bele as well, I mean, if he doesn't fancy him, why is he on the bench? Like, you know, you, you know there's a chance. If you you pick seven people on the bench, you know there's a chance that all of those seven might have to come on. You know, obviously, you can only pick three, but there might be a ch there's a chance that one of those seven will come on. It quite clearly wasn't working. We needed some creativity. Whether he's mm. trained, whether he's fit, whether he's not, he's picked him on the bench, so he must be fairly fit to be able to play part of the game. And he's got he's create he's creative, and it quite clearly wasn't working. And that that's the so thing that really irked me: the fact that he refused to change. And and I don't understand. Half time is perfect opportunity. Nil nil. You go in at half time, make some changes, and go right. That half never happened. It's a forty five minute game now. Go out there and win the game. And yeah, the, the, I mean. I'll put it down as just a bad, bad day at the office. I really? hope I'm right with that. And then this Chelsea game is back to a bit better. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just don't understand how you you can come out on TV and say we lack creativity. You've got Hill and Bella, and you've got one sub left. Pick one of them and put them on. But um, yeah, anyway, sure, I've, I've got to head off, I'm I mean, afraid. Um, no problem. Thank Here's you. the yeah, real question. If you... Yeah, if thanks you had... so so, yeah, thanks so much for inviting me on, everyone. Hit like, hit subscribe, and uh, yeah, cheers, guys. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Chris. Guys. Take it easy, yeah. man. Take it easy, cheers, Chris. Take it easy. I think, cheers. I think we've all been a little want... bit. Uh, just guys, guys, Mr. guys. Mr. Quick. What Chris said, right? Yeah, sorry. What Chris said earlier, right? Yeah, is if you're going to bring on someone like Hill, if you if you if you don't fancy Don Bele, fine, bring on Hill. The question is, if you're going to bring Hill on, who are you going to take off? This oh. lo right. Okay. Skip. If we're gonna go, in, if we're gonna go into awful. that game, if we're gonna go into that whole game and dissect that, the team selection was wrong. The formation was wrong for the players that he had on there. You can't play a four-three-three, and you have Hoybe on the right, and you play Winks on the left, and you play Skip, who wasn't fully fit. You could see that as a centre. He had no mobility to do that. Right. As a manager, and as fans, as watchers, anybody who's seeing that game can completely see it. That's what was happening. Now, as a manager, if you can't see that you're being overrun where your player is not, there's something wrong. So if you, as, as, as Chris said before he went, if you've put players on the bench, they must be there. It can't be just a make up the numbers thing. The player Jeez. is good enough to come on. Bring him on. If his attitude stinks, we can see it. And therefore, he's then vindicated to say, this is why he's not being played. He didn't have any opportunity to prove himself because he might be a game player. He might not train well. We all hear the stories of players that don't train well, who have bad attitudes. But as soon as they come on a pitch, fabulous. That's the sort does of player this I show think. You, does, this, does this show you... This match in particular, I think maybe we can turn it around the opposite way and say to ourselves that this particular match shows us that Nuno is nothing like 
Jose. See, Jose, right? Yeah, he would listen to what the fans, the club, coaches would say, and then he would try to change and accommodate. It seems to me that Nuno's the type of manager that is going to stick to his guns. When he's made a decision about something, he's never going to change it. And maybe that's, maybe that, we're learning, that maybe we're learning the, the right character. Thing, isn't it? No, is no, that good not or bad. Is no, that I think good or, Who does I that think it's professionalism <laughs> where you value <laughs> your own, you, you say to yourself, I'm at the top of the tree when it comes to decision making, and I won't have anyone double guess me. Okay. Now, whatever the whatever the reasons are, I think what we're doing is we're learning about the the type of manager that Nuno is. Now, you may get some Wolves fans that will turn around and say, Oh, we had him under us and we know him a bit like this, this, and this. The difference is. This manager has now come into a new football team. This football team is at least one quarter of the table higher than the previous team. So the so he's now playing at a different league altogether. He has an opportunity, and he knows it. He has an opportunity to take this team from where it is into somewhere very respectful. But right? he mm -hmm. understands that he couldn't take Wolves to where he can take Spurs. It uh, doesn't think, matter even yeah. if we're doing terribly right now as, yeah. as a club. We we have a better infrastructure and we have well, better name recognition when it comes to what's going to happen to the future. Now, whatever 100%. type of system that Nuno has got in his mind that he knows will work, he's looked at the, the squad and says, it ain't going to work with them completely. So maybe in I, another I, transfer you know what? window... You know what? Hold on, hold on. I, I, do, I, I kind of disagree. I think if we're taking the game in isolation, we had a lot of players missing. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's let's look at that. Let's look at the defensive side of things and then look at what happened in the game. I think we've got options. I don't think we've got as many options as, say, Manchester United or Manchester City, obviously. But we have got options depending on if everybody is fit. However, when you're when you're under the pressure like he was on, you want to see some sort of, you know, what can he do? Ta I've always said this tactically. I want to see what he's going to do. Because if you're under that sort of cop, what do you do? You bring some attack? Do you just say, "Oh, well, we're going to lose this game and just lose one, two, three without going for it and just accept your"? I don't think I, just... I want to see that from a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, tactically try something. At least we can say he tried it; it didn't work because he did this. We had ten men; he brought two attackers on, and we lost five 0 I can understand that losing three 0 to the way we played don't is not acceptable. That's not acceptable. And that's down to him. Let's see if that's a blip or it's going to be something else. See, I want to come to this point because I want to bring this up. And we have gone on a long time on this. So I'm going to calm it down a little bit. Uh, Sid, we're going to make you proud. That's what Nuno said in his opening interview for Spurs. How is he going to do that? By playing... Playing on Dumbella. Play. No, no, he's joking. Okay. No, no, not playing on Dumbella. Do you know what? By making <laughs> the right decisions at the right time. Um, and before I got cut off, I you guys were talking about and Dumbele and Hill. Everyone forgets at the moment we've got this young player on the bench, not even Scarlett Makandai, who's playing absolutely brilliant for Good the point. under 23s and he's ripping mm -hmm. it apart. Right. If you're if you're struggling um to create anything, you don't got whether he's got confidence in Hill or not, why don't bring Makandai on? He couldn't have done any worse than Winks or anybody else on that day. And that, he's got the confidence. He's got into the squad, right? Why are you putting him into the squad? Is it just to show face to say, oh, look, well done, mate. Pat on the shoulder. You're doing well for the under-23. He's just come and sit with the big boys. Play him. And I, I, I honestly You could argue think... that and Don Belly, though, as well, can't you? What's yeah. the point of putting him on the bench if you're not going to use him? You can say that. Him. Yeah, but you've got players there that have... Obviously, doing. I mean, all right. And Dumbbell has not played that much in preseason and whatever. Yeah, for whatever reasons, Mackandai has been playing constantly, and there's a lot of things about him. But as Heather Small said, what has he done to make us feel proud? Do you know what? What he really needs to do is um, get this Sunday out of the way. Forget about it's actually happened. It's a blip. We're not going to get this situation again where we're going to have three on international duty. One gets sent off. One gets injured. Uh, we're not going to have that. I don't think we're going to have that situation again. So what he's basically got to do is this week now, he's got to sit them all down, get back to his tactics. I know we've all been saying that 1-0, 1-0, 1-0. He needs to somehow get Harry Kane firing again. Right? Mm -hmm. And there's no bigger game. I think for me, Sunday is going to be massive. Absolutely massive. Because after Crystal Palace's defeat and the way we capitulated, People are now going to be watching Nuno a lot more carefully and they're going to be sat there now 
starting to judge him exactly how, what is he going to be made of? And Sunday's the game for him to make us feel proud now because you've just been battered. You've not done anything. No shots on target. You're one of the best strikers in the world, not even touched the ball in the penalty box. So what, what better way is it to make us feel proud than put up, show up, put up and get a result on Sunday against Chelsea? I, I know that Tommy's got a go so I want to come to Tommy. How is Nuno going to make us proud? I don't like these comments. I don't like these pre, you know, pre, uh, pre-game uh, press conferences. And even even when you first take charge, you can't you can't judge a manager by that. He's always going to say he's always going to look to the future and say yeah, say the things the fans want to hear. But um, do you know what this this type of football, this negative football, negative Nancy football is fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine when you win. It's fine when you win. This is getting ridiculous. It's relentless, isn't it? It's but, relentless. Um, it's, it's relentless, man. It's I'm going to try and skip past. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I can't remember what I was saying now. What was I saying? <laughs> what was I this type of football is nonsense or whatever you want. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So this type of football is fine. Under Joe say it was fine. We were top in December last season. We were top in December last season, we forget. But when you start losing, the, the players become disinterested as well because they're like, okay, look, we're losing games and we're playing in a negative manner. So okay, if you play in a positive manner, we might as well play in a positive manner and still lose games. And then mm. there's that problem with a the coach. There's that problem with a coach. You know, we want to play positive. We might as well. We're losing games. And that's what happened with Jose. He lost the team. He lost the dressing room. And we ended up finished seventh. We finished seventh. And so basically our form from Christmas until the end of the season was a, like a 12th, 13th place team. That's that's the reality so, of the situation. Sorry, do, you, do you think he's got more of a man management, better style of man management than Jose? Because it appears that some of the players look very together in training. You see, all the, I know it's all the videos, and they're probably going to put out the press is going to put all the rest of out. Sorry, the press officer, but they do look a little bit more together. They do look more cohesive at the back. Do you think, even if the way that they're playing continues and they have some losses, do you think the players will stay together? Because that's why I think Jose lost. He lost a lot of the players who just had enough of that. I think I think he lose the he will lose the players if he carries on playing in this manner he will lose the players. Jose's won like twenty five trophies and yeah. stuff, so they stay with him. They will stay with him longer. Nuno will lose them players faster. He will lose them players faster because he was effectively sacked by Wolves. But look, oh never, I'm never talking about sack. I've never talked about sacking uh, uh, Nuno at this stage. You've got to give him half a season, give him up until Christmas, 19, 20 games at least. Um, if you give the guy the keys, then you've got to stick with him. You've got to stick with him as far as I'm concerned. But from what I've seen in the first three games, even the ones we won, it, it, it's negative. It's negative football. And and with Wolves over the last few seasons, it's the same thing. The po- positive, as you say, defensively, we look OK. And he's a good defensive manager. At Wolves, he didn't sign a centre-back for four seasons. He's four years there. He didn't sign a centre-back. So he was able to adapt centre-backs. He got centre midfielders playing centre back. Cody was originally a centre mid at Liverpool before he signed him. Put him back to centre back. Uh, Didonka, he put him back at centre back. So he's a centre back coach. He works well with centre backs. So that's a positive, and our centre backs look good. But um, the wheels, if the if the wheels fall off, if the wheels fall off, and it can, it can in the Premier League, then they oh, really will fall can off. Big time. Mike, do you got what's your thoughts on that? Boys, I've got, of... I've got to run. I've got to run. I've got a YMCA routine. So, <laughs> tell me, tell me, um, tell me, um, what time is your sh- what time is your stream at? I'm doing it at nine fifteen. I'm doing it nine fifteen. I'll probably go on a little bit later. So Good make sure plan. you sub to this channel. Sub to this channel. Yeah. Smash the likes. Um, and you, if you're Jake. watching a recorded version, a lot of people forget. Smash the like. Get in the comments. Helps these uh, channels grow. So thanks. Tommy, do you have any special guests that uh, anyone knows about that is appearing on uh, your show? Mr. K. Oh, he should be on his way. <laughs> Why don't you not just self promote yourself? <laughs> Continuously on the channel. Do some more. Anyway, thank you, Tommy. Thank you no very much. Cheers, pleasure, Cheers, pleasure. Yeah, easy, yeah. Um, easy. Thank you. Come on, um, Mario. Mike, <laughs> Mike, just just go. <laughs> just going back to the point. Just going back to the point. How is he going to do this? How is he going to make us proud? What's what would you what would you do if you? I was think him? he's already done that. I think he's already. I think Michael Michael will agree with me, right? Yeah, that even though we didn't score that many goals in the first three games. And we didn't have that many touches and we didn't create too much. What we did do was we acted quite solid in our defense with our midfield stuck to the defense. And to a certain mm-hmm. degree, I felt good when we started to do that. Because, you know, uh, look, it, what Jose did at the beginning of last season was he introduced a certain flair to the game and we were scoring lots of goals. The problem was we were letting in two goals on a regular basis and so on. So he started tightening that up. What Nuno is doing is he's giving us a nice, solid foundation 
And fair enough, this particular game that happened completely went pear-shaped. I agree. But before that, the trend was is the defense was playing solid because they had the midfield in front giving them the confidence to say that we're acting as a team. And all the players seem to have upped their game. Mm. And we saw that with our own eyes. So we didn't exactly see the type of attacking flair that we had last season. But what we did do was we didn't see our team getting slapped around and being worried in the last quarter of an hour. Mike? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of agree. That. I kind of agree with what Mr. K is saying. I think um, I think he's – I do see the Palace game. It's just – it's gone against everything that we've seen so far – in pre-season and the first three Premier League games, um, whereby we just, I mean, I'm going to ignore the Palace game, but the first three Premier League games, we we defended higher as a unit, which I think when you've got the midfield and the strikers pushed up and that, we, we, we were pressing. We got back to pressing the opposition, uh, which obviously can cause mistakes, players misplay, uh, opposition misplaced passes, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, we didn't see any of this at that palace and I, I do and we haven't seen it in, in pre-season either and i do think this was just a one-off everything that could go wrong went wrong uh nuno's um uh, formation his tactics the way he set us up it was all wrong it, i think he just got it wrong and he, i i'm putting it i'm gonna put it down to he's had a bad day in the office i think for him to get it back uh, to make and to sort of start making us proud of the club, the team, the players, etc. I think he's got to start with it, like uh, like Sid said and Mr. K. Start with it by Sunday. Start with it. Get get back to. First of all, we need to be solid against Chelsea. So the back line, if we've got Dyer, if we've got Sanchez back, I know San, uh, Tanganga isn't there, but to be fair, I thought Royal. I thought he had a fairly decent game at right back. He was thrown in the deep end. Um, I mean, he had acres of space time and time again at Palace, and he just winks or whoever the ball just was not spraying it out to him. And he's he's Brazilian, so his first thought if he gets the ball is he's going to want to bomb down the wing and just an attack. So I, uh, it, it just beggars belief, doesn't it? But I think yeah, start by Chelsea to get the Chelsea game. Um, I think it starts on sheet, Thursday. I, oh, I forget about got... Thursday. I yeah, it's got to start Thursday yeah. for me. He's got he's got to play some <sighs> of these players. Some of these players. I know he's going to have to make some changes, and he will do because we've obviously got Chelsea at the weekend. But yeah, I think there's I one or two players Thursday. that played on Saturday that will need to, in my opinion, need to be played just to see if it's the if the level that they're at is Premiership level. Or is it going to be Ren, UE, UEC? Ren's a decent team. They're not, yeah, they're they're not, not, they're not going to be easy. No, I, they're not, they're not much. Easy you know I'd even play Harry Kane on Thursday, mate, because he needs his confidence back. He needs to start scoring. All right, he, just needs, a, he just looks unfit. Yeah, I'd, bring, I'd play him. I'd give him some time out, whether it's half an hour or 45 minutes. I'd play him because... Are we at home or are we away? We're away. 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 We're away. We're in France, so again, it's in France, listen, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, guys. It's, like you say, start on Thursday. Like you say, I forgot about the Thursday game. Start Thursday. Um, if you get a win under, if we put in a solid performance, get a good win that will carry some momentum into the into uh, is it Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday's, yeah, uh, Sunday's another London derby. Um, hopefully. The likes of Sanchez, Lacelso, hopefully Romero. That hopefully they're all back. Hopefully Dyer's fit and Sun's fit, and yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully gives us half gives us half a fighting chance, doesn't it? We need we need that, and we need to see a performance. Uh, I'm going to get your final thoughts. I'm going to start, Mister Kegs. I know you got to wrap it soon, but we are going to wrap the shop now, anyway. But final thoughts on you know so far in terms of Nuno's uh, tenure, shall we say? I think Nuno's not immune from what's happening on social media. I don't think he is living in such a bubble that he doesn't know that what the fan base feel or think. Mm. I mean, he started off his very first interview by talking about, you know, our, our motto and then telling us that, you know, he's, the, the whole thing about the team now is to make us proud again. Mm. You know, once we got to proud and we feel proud of our boys and proud of the team, then maybe they can go on to win something. But first of all, you need the fans consistently supporting the club. What we see over the weekend is a situation where, which may come up in the future, and we're looking at now how we're handling it. So I believe that come Thursday, 
he will may may very well i mean i like that comment earlier where he says that Tang tangay might be given an opportunity don't forget that i think this is the first time tangay has actually been on the subs bench mm, it was right so now now kane was on the subs bench as well the very very first time he didn't get played straight away so the way I look at it, had this game not gone the way that it had gone, then maybe the last 10, 12 minutes, he would have given that as a sub position right here to, to Tange and brought him on. But sure. as the game wore on, it was more of a case of, well, these are the boys that got us in the mess. These are the boys that are going to get us out of the mess. And he left him alone. But personally, I, I still believe in Nuno. I, I, I'm still happier that we concede less when we play properly than how many goals we score. Because scoring goals, we were doing for fun last season. The problem was we were letting them in so many times as well. Yeah. And and you can't you can't live the last five minutes of a game if the, you have to constantly worry about the result. And what so should we do? I, Literally, I think if right. we go back to the basics of what Nuno's trying to put into the team, that four three three that we all questioned, like originally thinking, why is he going for four three three? It actually works, and I'm happy with that system. <laughs> yeah, I think we can work. hold out Chelsea quite easily with that. Uh, not of those thoughts. Yeah, he can if we've got them. more of a creative. Yeah. We've got more. If we've got more creative players in that team, then yeah, I think we, I think we stand a decent chance. I think we can but... frustrate Chelsea. I think we can frustrate all the top teams because the top teams will be looking at us and thinking that they should win. And guess what? Mm. That's going to happen. They're going to come up against a hard rock. Well, that's, that's what I believe. There is, there is these, these tactical changes for me. I, I want to see how you approach each game. Each game is going to be different. See, just your final thoughts on 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 Nuno currently. How how's he doing so far? I prepared this before Tommy came on, right? <laughs> so this this yeah, this is what it is. Is this the real life? Or is it just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. <laughs> Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. We're just poor, we're just a poor boy. We don't need no sympathy. We are Tottenham fans. Tottenham fans. <laughs> we're a ball boy. No, change that last lyric to uh, we're just a ball boy. Yeah, but hey, the easy come, easy go. Little high, little low. Any the wind blows, doesn't Good really mark. matter Good to me. Yeah, but uh, no, See, you know what? Out the Bismillah, never mind. Yeah, Bismillah. <laughs> no. He's a He's a poet, he's a singer, he's a writer, he's a performer. He's I love Sid. Yeah. Love Sid. <laughs> you know what? You know what it is? Seriously. Like, the day, Everyone, all the viewers, please big up Sid, man. Put big up Sid in the, in the comments, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Fantastic. If you're not watching any of his programs, you should definitely watch some of the programs. 100%, that he has, uh... you've got to watch Art Sid. Uh, Mike, final thoughts? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with what Sid and, um, in general, what Sid and Mr. K and, and Tommy have said in the stream. I think um, it's too early to, to judge uh, Nuno. Um, any talk of him being sort of a fraud or being kicked out or being sacked, I, I, I just, it's just nonsense. Um, I think I think Nuno's just got to just, just stick to his principles and, and just forget the Palace game and, and let's just move forward as a, as a team, as a club. Um, get all those players back from uh, I don't know from international. I say international duty into prison or whatever you want to call it. Wherever they are, uh, and wherever they are. <laughs> I mean, they're in. Oh, where are they in Europe? They're in Europe, Poland, they're aren't in they? Croatia. They're in Croatia. Croatia. Um, yeah, we just need to. Uh, this is and this is another subject for another day. But the international breaks just kill some of the teams, don't they? And they've done it to us this weekend. So hundred percent. Um, yeah, just let's just <laughs> gather, let's just re recollect and just gather our thoughts and, and just get the players back out with Thursday, win it Thursday, go out on Sunday with a bit of momentum, and uh, hopefully get the season sort of uh, uh, way. Uh, well, fans, oh, lads, um, just got to say to the viewers, as you can see, we do all sorts on there. We're entertainers, we have some serious <laughs> debates, we have a few fallouts. We then have some sing songs. We have poetry. We have everything. It's, it's, you have Mario. You know what I mean? We were even doing Come Dining before you lot even joined us. But anyway, that's another story completely. Anyway, like, subscribe, share, comment. Paxton Road TV, please, please, please. It helps us out tremendously. Just hit that like button. Smash that like button. Uh, and join us every couple of days or so. We've got uh, Sid. Not even Sid says now. We've got Ask Sid. Sid. And that is Friday this week. Friday, please, Friday this everyone, week. put uh, leave your comments. And if you've got anything you want to ask Sid, 
please put it in and we will discuss it on Friday. I want so, people to put in, put it in, so, put it in. So once you come up with that topic, make sure that goes out and make sure you, our viewers, give them comments because it's a great show. Uh, Simon kicked it off. Simon from Premier Hotspur TV kicked it off with Sid mm -hmm. last week. Brilliant. Uh, so again, make sure you smash that like button. We've got preview shows coming up for the Wrens game on Wednesday. The game itself on Friday, we do a reaction show. And also Saturday and Sunday, preview reaction show for the big one, the Chelsea game, which is going to be a test and a half. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you very, very much. It has been a pleasure. It has been entertaining. It's been funny. It's everything. This is, this is what we like about this show. It's really been. Uh, so thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much, Sid. And Mr. K, we'll be sorry to see you on Tommy's show very soon as well. Um, yeah, I think that's it, gentlemen. Thank you. And good.